When you finish, guys, when you uh, finish, can you please just put your quiz on top of my purple binder there, the, the Trapper Keeper? Okay. Put your quiz there. Take out your data table, please. Say again? You yeah, you're supposed to finish this for homework. Did you collect my quiz? <laughs> you can put your quiz right on top of the purple trap key. Uh, no, yeah, it's top. Oh, you took it home? Because I need some help with it. I, I, I had a little bit of... I finished it, but I had a little issues with the little... The, the gray spots. Okay, that's what we're gonna do today, so. Alright. Oh no. Quiz on the one that we're about to do. So can you come in for extra help at some point? It's fine again. A lot of rounding happens here, guys. Don't worry if you're rounding. Uh, I prefer you not to right now, man. You're about to do something right now. Unless you really got to go. Yeah, but did you get all these for sure? That's the hard part. Oh, I didn't get those. If you can hold it, I would wait. I'd recommend it. Anybody still working on the quiz? All right. So with these worksheets yesterday, I know it was not here. Just an odd check was able to actually go over the idea with you. What you were supposed to do simply was this: fill in all the data values. Obviously, they're not all filled in here, but all the data values, and then try and make some sort of a conclusion at each end to what it's going toward. Then on the back, there was another way you could make oh, a conclusion also. Okay. What we're going to try and do now is fill in those values and make some sort of a conjecture about each of these scenarios. Notice each of these separations here indicate a separation, these dark horizontal lines. So these four were grouped together, these four were grouped, and these four were grouped together. Some people might have noticed it, maybe not, but again that's where they were separated by. Now the first four were quite easy, a lot of people got those correct. Because what they noticed here, if somebody could tell me, I start where I'm defined, but what happens as I go to the right, what's happening to this number? Yeah. Bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So what's going to keep happening to it? Keep when something keeps getting bigger, what does it go infinite. toward? Infinity. Infinite or infinity, very good. But for the second part, on the left side, what's happening to that one? Negative decreasing, so it's going to be negative infinity. Very good. Again, each of these, awesome job, are decreasing. Now, <laughs> another, another way to say it, guys, 
Another way to say it is it's increasing in the negative direction. Because look at the number itself. The numerical part, ignore the negative yeah, signs, is getting bigger. You see that still? But it's getting bigger in which direction? The negative direction. Negative, yeah. The negative direction. So I want you to think about that because a lot of people get that confused. The number is getting smaller, of course, because it's becoming close to negative infinity, but it's getting larger in the negative direction. The next one here. What happened as I went in this direction? Did it get bigger or smaller? Were number, were one number's getting bigger or smaller in that direction? Andy? Oh, it's smaller, yeah. I think they were getting smaller going closer to negative infinity, right? And Karen, over here, what happened? Uh, now, for the third row, for the third row, when I went this way, was it going toward negative infinity or positive? Uh, oh, negative. Which one? Negative. I think it's negative for the third one, I'm pretty sure here. In this direction, what's going to happen? Positive. And then finally, the last line? Positive. Okay. So, for the first four, for the first four, it was very, very evident that all of these values were increasing, one in the negative direction or in the positive. Again, the numbers themselves though, are getting bigger. So we know that it's going to either positive infinity or negative infinity. Two. Guys? Um, um, we, wrote that, we wrote that Emerson. I think that I'm wrong. We're what? You, you know those right there on the side? We wrote that and then he said it was wrong. Right? What do you mean? He said argument, right? We're going to get to the next part in a second, Melissa. That's only the first part. Second part, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. We'll talk about that. So here, what I want you to notice is this. As you go, as x gets bigger or smaller in either direction, the function is getting larger or smaller, either one of them. So it's called unbounded. This is when it's unbounded. So I would start by writing this for this portion. Unbounded. The simplest way to think about a function that's unbounded would be this. And this is a little bit crazy to think about. Imagine. Imagine it starts to rain today. Okay? And somehow, I know it's not possible, because we all know rain comes from actually the ground. The water evaporates into the sky and then it comes back down. So it's a cycle, right? That's how the weather works. Imagine though, imagine if it just didn't stop raining. Like Noah's Ark style. It just didn't stop raining. <laughs> What would happen to the water body? And it would never I stop. Think it would. No, no. If it never so imagine though, man, that our weather system didn't work that way and it just kept raining, okay? Yeah. Eventually the water would just keep going up and up and up. It's unbounded. It's gonna keep it's rising. Flooded. Over flooding, yes, or overflowing. So here, these examples, the first four, they all are unbounded. They go to infinity or negative infinity. The second part, the second part. Can I get a volunteer that has their table completed to give me this row right here, please? Andy. Andy, starting right here. Oh, that's 1.99. So, uh, 1.99. And that's 1.99. Yeah. Negative, I don't think it's negative. It's, it can't be negative. You must have made a mistake there. It's got to be positive. The next one's 2.00. I think there was a 4 there. It's, it, 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 I know it's positive. 5 seven. Okay. So, for this kind of a problem now, notice, if I go to the left, so take starting point here. Girls, you need to listen back there or I'll separate one or the other. Please listen. Okay? Just keep stopping every two seconds. Here, if I go to the left, I notice that this number went from negative 15 to negative 2 to negative 1.5 to about negative 1.99. So what is it going toward? What number? 2. It's going toward 2 here. That's the hard part to notice. This is going toward 2. On this side, it starts a bigger number, like 10, and it goes down further and further. So what is this one going toward? Also two. But they're going toward two from different directions. One started negative, one started positive. Everybody clear on that so far? 
So if I were to graph this, Josue, what's up? That's what I'm going to explain how we can figure it out in a minute. We'll, we'll come up with a conjecture or a rule that will always work. If I were to graph something that we see here, I'm graphing what you see here. I would have, as x goes to the right, it starts positive and goes down. That's what's going on there. And on the other side, for 0, it starts at a negative 15, and it's getting bigger, but it's also flattening out. And what I'm going to notice is that both of these curves get closer to 2. This one comes from below. This one comes from above. They both get closer and closer, but they're not actually going to get there. What did we call that? Think back to concept 43. What kind of a line is that when it gets closer and closer to it, but it doesn't ever get there? Uh -oh. What's the second part? Asymptote. There it is. Now, for this problem, what kind of a line does this look like? Does this look like a vertical line anymore? No. So what might you call this? What's the other word? No. A horizontal asymptote. Look at the line. Look at the green line on the page here. That's the line y equals 2. That is the line y equals 2. Well, take a look. What was our end behavior a minute ago, guys? No. 2 and 2. So today, what we're going to be talking about are horizontal asymptotes. This is where they come from. Now, I'm going to give you a quick, a quick uh, answer to some of these. This one should have been 0.2 and 0.2. This one should have been negative 0.3 repeating and negative 0.3 repeating. This one should have been 4 and 4. Look at those values and then look back at the functions on the far left, please. So look at all the answers I just put up for those. And then look back at these four functions. Does anyone see any correlation here? Any correlation? Did no one figure this out in the homework? Yeah. Well, okay. What do you think? What do you think? Look at the functions that are circled in red, and look at the values that we just wrote down: two, point two, negative point three, four. Where are those numbers coming from? They're coming from somewhere. The first. Go ahead, Karen. Go ahead. The first one, Karen. Term. Oh. Okay, so the bottom or the top? Which one do you want? Both. So numerator is the first one then. Numerator. And then what else do I look at? Very good. Karen said divide both of the first terms of each. We call those what? What do we call the B term? We call those the leading coefficients. Okay, so what we're going to look at now is this. Take a look here at this 12. This 12 divided by this 6. What do you get when you do 12 over 6? 2. There's the 2. That's where that comes from. Take a look at the next line. What's the leading coefficient here? Is row at 1. And what is this? What's 1 divided by 5 as a decimal? 0. 0. 0.2. Or 2 tenths. Okay, 1 fifth is really 2 tenths. Next, the third one is trickier. What's the leading coefficient of the numerator for the next one? Not 3, but negative 3. Again, there's your leading coefficient. Because what's the biggest term? x squared. Isn't that the highest? So you always look at the highest degree. The bottom, though, is a 9. Negative 3 over 9. Negative 3 over 9. Melody, focus, please. Negative 3 over 9 is negative 0.3 repeating. That's where that comes from, right here and here. And then finally, the last line, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So for the middle part, the well, middle part, I just had a... our ends go to some numbers. They go to some numbers. Mm -hmm. Finally, the last part. What did everybody, and now you might not have noticed this right away, but take a look here. This is a negative number getting smaller, the, the actual number. It's getting smaller, it's getting smaller, it's getting smaller. These are all decimals. What's the small, if it, if it keeps getting to a smaller, 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 smaller decimal, why do we get it closer and closer and closer? Zero. Zero. Remember the other day I gave the example with the radioactive element or walking to the door? You walk halfway, 
then you walk halfway, then you walk halfway, you never get there, but the gap between you and the door gets closer and closer to zero. That's what's happening with these four. All of these examples actually all go to zero if you look at the numbers. They all go to zero. That's the third case. So we have three cases today. The first case where you could have plus or minus infinity. The second case where they go to some numerical value that gives us from the leading coefficients. And the third case where they go to zero. Now, flip over your page, please. Okay, look at those problems that are written down there. And then look at the groupings. Don't look at the bottom four. Look at part two. Look at numbers one, two, and three for part two. Now, look up at the board as you're doing this. The first part says, if the degree of the numerator is bigger than or greater than, in your paper, greater than the degree of the denominator. What does the degree mean? What is it? Which one? I see exponents everywhere, Kelly. Which exponent? Karen? The highest exponent. So, take a look at the first four examples, everybody. Please, list your degrees here. What's the degree of the numerator here? And the degree of the denominator? So the degrees are 2 to 1, right? Don't, don't think of those as numbers. Think of them as degrees. Next one, what are the degrees? Next one. Next one. What do you notice about all the numerator degrees? They're all what? They're all greater than. Melissa, I can see why you saw that. They are divisible by 2 also. Absolutely correct. And that just has to be a coincidence. I should switch this next time so that this is like odd or something. Just get rid of that. I apologize. But for each of these, what you do want to really pick up on is that the degree of the numerator is bigger than. Some fashion is bigger than. Okay? And what we noticed here, what happened at the ends of our behavior? They went to what? Or, or negative or positive. So for that first question, for that first question, you're looking at these first four examples because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So you might want to write down the margin over here somewhere. In your margin, you might want to write d sub n is greater than d sub d. The degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. So if you were to somehow make the conjecture to answer number one on part two on the back. So on part two on the back, number one says, if the degree is greater than the denominator, the numerator greater than the denominator, then fill in the blank. What would you finish that with? Very good, Karen. Say that nice and loud. Nice and loud. Very good. An end behavior will be negative or positive infinity. And you can write that with a plus or minus if you want. The end behavior will be plus or minus infinity. And we'll determine which is which in a little while. Or actually, we'll determine that in our next half of the class. Not today. Maybe I'm more suspense. I know, it's intriguing. Are we going to take those things? We're good. Yeah. Number two, the second section. It says, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. That's the second question, right? It says equal to there? Correct me if I'm wrong. On the back, the question says the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. Well, when does that happen, guys? Does that happen in the second case or in the third case? The second case. Take a look. Degrees. What are the degrees here of these ones? Aren't they one to one? What's the degrees here? Two to two. Third one? Two to two. And finally, three to three. So, when the degrees are equivalent, what did we do? What was the rule that Karen told us here? What did we look at? What parts of the equation? I'm not going to answer this question, people. You just did it. Let's go. What was the question? When the degrees were identical for these four here, how did we determine these numbers? What part of these equations did we look at? The denominator. The, um, the denominator. The leading coefficient of? The denominator. No, the numerator. And? The denominator. Both. Remember, we divided them. We divided them. So for this one, 
when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator? What we can say is, what we can say is, there is a horizontal asymptote because of this green line here. See the green line that we just drew a little while ago. There is a horizontal asymptote at y equals, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So again, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals. Now, how did I determine what y equals? What did I do again? I divided, right, the leading coefficients. So y equals, now here, just write down L, C, N for leading coefficient of the numerator and L, C, D for leading coefficient, not least common. That's why I'm putting the dots there. I know it looks the same. Leading coefficient of the numerator, write out the words if you have to, over leading coefficient of the denominator. Remember, whatever that turned out to be, in the first case, it was 12 divided by 6. So we got y equals 2. That's where this green line, that's where this green line came from at y equals 2. That's the equation right there. So again, your horizontal asymptote, your horizontal asymptote comes about from y equals some number. Well, what is that number? That number is represented by the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. Just simply divide them and you'll see it. Third part, finally, third part. What happens on both ends for this one? Zero. Zero. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look here. If I were to graph this, if I were to show you a graph of this, here's what I would see. I would see a graph that looked like this and a graph that looked like this. This graph goes like this. Oops. And this graph goes like this. For now. Okay, let's say hypothetically that's what it looked like. So if I were to grab that data, both of my ends went to zero. They both went to zero. So what does that tell me? What does that tell me about an asymptote? Because a minute ago, they both went to two. And we said the asymptote was just y equals two. What is the asymptote? What equals zero though? Y equals zero. So here, you will always have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator is less than, let's make sure we make that statement. Remember for this case, the degree of the numerator for this last one, look at all the numerators. The degrees are zero over one, one over two, two over three, and then two over three again. Notice there's no degree for this one. That's why I put a zero there. There's no exponent. So whenever the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we get this kind of a behavior, where the horizontal asymptote occurs at y equals zero. What does y equals zero mean, though? What is that, really? Uh, it's right there. It's on the little... Isn't just a horizontal line? Yeah. Good. It's a horizontal line. It's, it's what do we usually call the line y equals zero, though? We don't call it y equals zero. What do we actually call it? Why intercept? No. Isn't it so weird how tricky this is? And you're going to hear the answer like, oh gosh. Zero. What is the line y equals zero really talking about? The line. Point. This is no. Root. No. Look at the graph, guys. What is this curve getting closer to? Zero. The line. Well, what, zero. What is this right to here? The x, to the x axis. What is it? The x axis? The line y equals zero is the x axis. Think about it logically. Oh, Watch. Uh, y equals two is here. Here's y equals one. Here's y equals negative one. Here's y equals negative two. Well, here's y equals zero. It's in between, isn't it? It's really just the x axis. So this line y equals zero here, that line that I drew in the beginning, just in parentheses, please put the x axis. Okay, y equals zero is really just the x axis. Okay, it's really just the x axis. You see why we couldn't go outside today, guys? Sorry. Yeah. That's the reason why. We're allowed to do it in this table. Um, for these three cases, now what we're going to do is go to some examples. What I originally did was I planned to go through all these examples and teach you, but then I thought about this table and it made it a lot easier to see it. So what we're going to do now is look at examples and see how we can apply this. What I'm also going to show you is this. I'm going to show you how to use this doing infinity notation. And it's actually pretty easy. You're going to see that right away. The reason being is, what am I really doing? I'm making x get bigger and bigger and bigger in this direction. 
which means x is really going toward infinity. And in this direction, x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so that's going toward negative infinity. So why don't we just say, let's plug in infinity in the function and see what happens at the end, and plug in negative infinity in the function and see what happens at that end. Well, that didn't work for us with polynomials. We didn't do it that way. But for rational functions, we're going to try that also. So now what we're going to do is go into some nodes for today. Okay, for this example here, the first thing I started by saying, you don't have to write this one because you're actually doing it already. This is, this is the back side of your worksheet that you just filled in. So again, on your worksheet, you should have three things right now. The first one, I should say plus or minus infinity. The second one was y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator or the leading coefficient of the denominator. And the third answer was it goes toward the horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Again, the third answer is it goes toward the horizontal asymptote y equals zero, which is really the x-axis. That's what this table is here. And what I wanted to do was keep this in mind, but you already know the answers to these. So we're going to leave that for now. Let's go into the first example right off the bat. Figure out which case this is. Case 1, 2, or 3. Figure out which case it is, and then come up with your answer about the end behavior. Again, figure out on your own. Figure out which case it is, then try and figure out what the end behavior is like based on what we just wrote on the back of that worksheet. So use the back of your worksheet, figure out which case it is, and then go ahead and try and write down the end behavior. To yourself, please. Example one, guys, all the question is saying is find the end behavior. Talk about a horizontal or slant asymptote, which we're slant asymptote, we'll talk about more tomorrow. And then I ask you to apply it. We're going to apply it together to show an example. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah. Sorry, right? I used to yes. make a conclusion about the existence of a slant asymptote. asymptote. This is concept 44, by the way, if you're writing your notes, which is horizontal and slant asymptotes. Concept 44, horizontal and slant asymptotes. Uh, are we taking a test before the quarter ends or right after? Should be before. I mean, we have 45 and 46 uh, on the left. It will definitely be before. The quarter doesn't end until when? Next Thursday. Is it right next Thursday? Yeah, and like we're out on on Monday. On the 21st. And when? Wait, Monday? Monday and Friday. We'll talk in, we'll talk in the end of class. We should get it in before the quarter, though. All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> It's, it's just that if I get anything lower than a 96, I understand. Work on the problem. I'm going to have to scroll. Tell me which case am I in, and don't tell me case one, two, or three. Tell me about the degrees. What are they? Oh, it's uh, Karen, the degrees. Good. The degree of the numerator is just one. The degree of the denominator is also one. When the degrees are equal, we look at the ratio of the leading coefficients. Remember? We look at the leading coefficients. You end up getting a horizontal asymptote at y equals what? Two. two. Again, six over three, which is just two. Okay, a horizontal asymptote at six over three, which is really, which is really just simply two. Remember, whenever they're the same degree, when they're both the same, they both are a degree of 1, you simply look at the leading coefficients only. And that's where your horizontal asymptote will be for this. Now, here's the alternate way to do this problem, and some of you might like this better. If I think about it, I'm finding the behavior as it goes to infinity and negative infinity. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and type the, or plug in infinity in for x. And this is going to look really funky. Okay? Because what is infinity, right? What is 3 infinity, really? So, here's what I want to do. In order to describe this, I'm going to give you a little bit of a story. Make it simple. If you, if you wanted to ask a question like this, let's say, um, who's really rich? Like a, a comedian or like a businessman? Who's the man? Louis C.K. Who else? Bill Mayer. Bill Mayer. Who's really rich though? Like really rich. Louis C.K. 
He's not really. Who's real Oprah? Oprah. Oprah. Okay, Oprah. That's a good example. Oprah is insane. Any, any, any uh, celebrity? Sorry. Oh. Somebody is really rich. I'm sorry. Any, any, anybody is really rich. So Oprah's really rich, right? Oprah's got like. Oprah's got hundreds of millions of dollars. No question. Yeah, she does. So if if you walked up to Oprah today and you said you haven't to see her, right? I said Oprah, can you give me two bucks? I really need two dollars for lunch today. I forgot my lunch money. Say Oprah, I'm going to be here, okay? And let's say Oprah was, you know, a normal person. What do you think she'd say? She'd be somewhere, yeah. She'd probably say yeah, right? <laughs> now, you said she'd give you two hundred. You said yes. Yeah. Both those statements are good. Why? Why does two dollars not mean much to Oprah? Because she's got so much money, right? We all agree with that? Yeah. So, like, for example, if somebody came up to me and said, Mr. Howell, can I get 50 bucks? What do you think I'd say? No. no. 50 bucks is a good amount of money. That's like dinner for a whole week, right? <laughs> no, we're talking a lot of money. Dinner every night, you know, 10 bucks a night, you buy food and cook it. Yeah. Stay for an entire week there. So I'm not getting 50 bucks, sorry. True. Can't happen. Now, here's what I want you to think about next. If I have... If I have three infinities, how big is infinity? Uh, There's, no limit. There's no limit to it. It's, it's infinite. That's, that's the word, infinity. So if I have three of them, three infinities, and then I say, I'm going to take away four from three infinities. Melissa, does it do anything? No. No, the negative four. What would you call the negative four? Negative four. <laughs> what would we deem it to be? What would we call this? What's the word? But it doesn't have any effect, really. What's a word for that? Insignificant. Insignificant. Okay? Another word that mathematically we use, besides that, is negligible. What does negligible mean? Like you can overlook it. That's exactly right, John. Good use of words. You can overlook it. If something is negligible, it doesn't really matter. Right? It makes no difference. For example, guys, you get up in the morning, right? Say it's 70 degrees out. But then later in the day, it's 71 degrees. Are you really going to notice it? No. Pretty much no, because it didn't really change. That delta T of one degree <laughs> is negligible. So here's what we do. <laughs> we do not, and listen carefully please, we do not cancel the negative four. Here's what we do. We say that it goes to zero or it doesn't have any effect on the problem. It's pretty much like insignificant, or in this case we use the word negligible. It sounds like it's a weird word. Okay. It has no effect on the problem, really. So the same example is over. You ask her for a dollar. What's a dollar over? It's not. If that were true, keep your focus, people. We still have a lot to do. If that were true, then I could say that h of infinity is really approximately six infinities over three infinities. Because the four again, did the four have any effect? Not really, right? And this is a very abstract topic. But if I have six x over three x, what would happen to my x's? They would cancel. Again, if I had six x's up top, three x's down below, six x and three x, the x's drop off. Now, infinity is just like that. So when I cancel these, I'm left with. And notice, what did we start with? Six, six over three. So if you're wondering, if you're wondering really, how come we can just take the leading coefficients and put them over each other? How come we can just take six and divide it by three to start this problem and we're done? The reason is because what we just showed really. As it goes to infinity, only the infinity is important. Okay, only the infinity part is important. So we drop off the others. We get six over three. Okay? I just imagine the part. Draw a sketch of the graph. You don't have to draw the exact graph. I hope your sketch looks like this. <laughs> That's what your sketch should look like on your own, please. Yeah, this is line y equals two. Every time you do your homework tonight, I want you to be able to sketch these. So use your calculator if you have to. Type in the function and draw yourself a sketch. And notice you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, just like we stated a minute ago. 
Okay, if you grab that new calculator right now, this is what you're going to see here. And you'll see that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Okay, again, please, you're only sketching. You're only sketching. Next one. List the degree of the top and list the degree of the bottom. What is the degree of the numerator? Two. What is the degree of the denominator? Two. And they're equal, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So now I need to look at their leading coefficients. What are the coefficients going to be? Two. Two and eight. So what's two over eight, guys? Four. One fourth. Good. Four. Point two five, right? Four. So for this one, we say since the degrees are equal, the asymptote is going to be at two eight or point two five. And it is more useful for a decimal when it comes to this stuff. Because you know why? A lot of people see 2 over 8, and what do they think? They think of a slope. And then I start seeing slopes on graphs and stuff. But this, remember, this is your horizontal asymptote. Its slope is 0, so that's not a slope, clear. But again, that's what the value is going to be because the degrees were the same. Eddie. Let's, let's talk about that now. How do I just ignore the 5x is the question. And let's go into that. So, again, alternate solution. Let's take a look, people. <laughs> All right, are we clear on that? That's what we get when we plug it in. Now, the question becomes next, and this is a really tough question. I've got infinity with a 5 in front of it. I've got infinity squared with an 8 in front of it. I've got infinity squared with a 2 in front of it. Those all have infinities in them. So they're all pretty big values, aren't they? Yeah. Now, here's a little trick to remember what to do next. Think to yourself, pick a number in your head, don't say it, bigger than 1. Pick a number in oh yourself, God, bigger than 1. <laughs> now, Take that number and square it. Take that number and square it, get the new number. Does that number get bigger or small? Bigger. It gets bigger, right? Again, if you start with bigger than 1. So if I had 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, they get bigger. So, what's bigger, infinity or infinity squared? Infinity squared. Infinity squared, right? It's clearly bigger. Wouldn't that still be infinity? Theoretically, it still is like infinity, but we start using what are called orders of magnitude. This is an order of magnitude higher than this one is. Cubed would be even higher, to the fourth power be even higher. Now, the reason I'm asking you this is the following. If your number keeps getting bigger, take a number like 30 and square. You get 900. 30 goes to 900. So a number like 1,000, the number of 1,000. If you multiply 1,000 by 1,000, you get a million. A thousand squared becomes a million. That's so much bigger. So if I keep getting bigger, this number is eventually going to be much, much, much bigger than this number is. So for this problem, not only do I drop these off by saying that they are insignificant, but I also drop off the 5x, or the 5 infinity in this case. The 5x you see in the middle there. So in the end, you still end up with 2 infinity squared over 8 infinity squared. When I reduce that, those cancel, I get 2 over 8, which is still 0.25. Again, no matter what here, I really have to think about the fact that I'm only looking at the highest degree. That has the most power. Okay? It has the most power. You're looking at the highest degree here. Now, you might be asking also, well, what about negative infinity, Mr. Howe? We talk about end behaviors on both ends, isn't it? Well, let's take a look quickly. Put negative infinities in everywhere. There's the four spots, right? This is still insignificant. These are insignificant. They're gone. Well, this now becomes... But if I have the same thing and they're both negative, what do two negatives become? A positive. A positive. So I still get 2 over 8. Still get 0.25. So for this graph, please sketch that. And I want you to specifically make sure you notice 
that this goes through the horizontal asymptote. And I'm going to talk about that now. But it goes through it, which is very intriguing. So if you're, if you're graphing a sketch of this, you should have your asymptote at 1 fourth. So make that 0 0.5, make that 0 0.25, make your asymptote at 0 0.25, graph this one. And then please, on the right side, make sure you emphasize this, that it goes through it, but then it comes back up. So, here is the interesting thing to note, and you need to write this down, and I already wrote it at the conclusion out at the bottom there. Okay? The interesting thing to note here is that if, if you have a horizontal asymptote, it can be crossed. Whereas a vertical asymptote, we talked about that as a discontinuity. So clearly, I couldn't cross a vertical asymptote, because a discontinuity means I have to get to the asymptote and hop over. That's what we talked about yesterday and the day before. Or, sorry, two days ago. You get to the asymptote vertically, and then you hop over and keep going. For this kind of a problem, though, I didn't stay at the asymptote or hop over. Here, I went through the asymptote. So a horizontal asymptote can be crossed. That's what you want to make sure you write down. A horizontal asymptote can be crossed. You only know where to put the dashed line? No, no, the other one. Well, the other ones we'll talk about where they come from. We're just sketching right now from our calculator. So you usually know where now with the asymptote? Yeah, for now, all we graphed was the asymptote, and then I would have you guys just look at your calculator for now. We're going to start learning on how to graph this stuff, too. Okay? The cool part here, though, is that, again, you can cross it and come back. You can cross it and still come back. Okay? I want to give you an example of this now. And this is a very real life example. Ever driven over a speed bump? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Can somebody describe in words the motion of your car from the time that you hit the speed bump to the time that, or let's say, <laughs> to like maybe 100 feet later, were you describing the motion or were you just jumping up? I was describing the So you hit the speed bump, what happens initially, guys? <laughs> Boom, you jump up, right? Yeah. Then what happens to your car? Yeah. Then what? Up. Then what happens? Up. But eventually what happens? Everybody watch my hand there? So again, here's your car tire. Your car tire is moving forward. You hit the speed bump. Focus, girls. You hit the speed bump, and then you begin to fluctuate, and you have these little laps, and then what happens? It lines out. So, and this is an example. This is an example. This is an example of a what's called a spring mass damper system. <laughs> I'll explain how it works. Listen carefully. I know you don't correct that as an engineering application. You know what springs are, right? You all know what springs are? Yeah. Okay. A damper, a damper is simply have you ever closed the door and it doesn't slam as it goes to the end, it goes like it goes real slow. And you have to really push to close the door. Oh, yeah. Has no one ever tried this? Yeah. 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 Our doors clearly don't do that. Yeah. It just closes, right? But here, if I had a damper up here, yeah. which is a cylindrical rod, inside of that cylindrical rod there's a fluid and there's a disc. And then imagine underwater. Take your hand underwater. What happens? It's floating. Right? Oh, now they have a disc <laughs> going across the fluid. So when the disc engages with the fluid, it stops the door to slow down really slow. Same thing in your car. You guys think that you only have springs as your suspension. You have these things called dampers also. Have you ever, a lot of new cars, if you pop the hood of your car and lift it up, it just stays up now. Yeah. A lot of the time you just have to put a lever and hold it up, uh, but now you lift it and it stays. Car. <laughs> A lot of them, it's my broken my car, so I have to fix it. A lot of them have these, they have dampers on the side that have a fluid in them that holds it up with a viscous force. What you're seeing here is exactly that. Your car is the speed bump. If it was just a spring, it would be like, ever see the movies where the car comes up with like crazy hydraulics and you see it like bouncing as the car approaches? That would be, that would be an under damp system or a system where the car continues to bounce. It doesn't flatten out. But normal cars that we know, we are in a speed bump, like it flattens out. So, here's the conclusion that I want you to know. For this example, the x-axis is an asymptote, even though it doesn't look like it. This right here, this x-axis you're seeing here, 
the wave, the wave you see is getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis until it finally settles out. This is an asymptote also, even though it crosses it many times. Look how many times it crosses the axis. See how many times, and then eventually it touches the axis forever. This is still an example of a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Again, it happens to be a different application with exponential decay and growth, but it's again an example. What I want you to do tonight for your homework are numbers 1 and 6. 1 and 6. Okay? Tomorrow, we're going to do the other cases. We looked at the first case just now of when the denominator degree is equal to the numerator degree, when they were the same. Tomorrow, we'll continue and talk about them. Tomorrow, just so you know the plan, we're going to do something for pie there. i got an activity I think you guys will find a little bit fun. Okay? It's not eating pie, it's actually it's pie related to math. I think uh, like, you're not going to eat this now. Pie, 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 pie. Somebody wants to make a pie and bring it in, I don't want to argue with that. Yeah, make a pie what I want you to do though tonight is one and six. One and six only. Instead of making brownies, okay? make a pie. <laughs>